yesterday, this morning. Um, but I'm really grateful to be here. And it was um, really inspiring, especially to see some of the sort of like uh, the people behind sort of some of the underlying technologies or projects that um, uh, I have uh, really been using. Um, um, so my name is Gott Bill Heider. Um, I'm an artist, um, educator, and toolmaker. Um, currently uh, based in Amsterdam. Um, I work with the publishing lab last year. That was sort of also my connection to this particular topic. Um, yeah, and I do some um, work with the Processing Foundation on trying to make um, sort of like code and, um, and um, code more accessible to like a wider um, audience. Um, this is sort of like my main um, sort of like voice in um, and um, so today I'm going to talk briefly about um, this project that came out of my time at the publishing lab. Um, uh, it's called the Sausage Machine, and I'm going to explain why. Um, and so just to give a brief context, you've already, uh, I mean, that was already also a bit mentioned in the previous uh, presentation, uh, the internet uh, but um, so what I'm doing is sort of like nothing new, I'm building upon um, the so-called the green book, um, <laughs> the from print to ebook hybrid publishing toolkit for the arts. Um, that was this sort of like um, two-year research project where also um, Michael was um, kind of instrumental in defining a lot of the technologies and um, sort of language um, that's used. Um, the other resources is sort of like this is the main publishing that uh, you account. Um, and again, like we're like heavily um, using uh, Angle, uh, which is, I think, uh, I mean, I haven't um, still had a hard time uh, understanding Haskell or so, but um, I think sort of like it's a fantastic initiative. Um, and this is the, this is the URL. Um, you've seen a similar um, diagram before, but real quick, sort of like um, we have those uh, markdown files that are our central, that are central to the editing process. They're really great because you um, you can dip them um, and you can you can use like Git uh, workflows and stuff. And then from the mark, um, so that, that's sort of like the the, the, the existing workflow. Um, and so sort of like from the markdown, we go into different formats um, via a pen log. And it's not only pen log; it's sort of like pen log plus uh, make files um, plus a lot of uh, scripts that. Um, a lot of different people, also like um, Andre Castle, have contributed to. Um, and the end result is sort of like files for different output formats. Um, and this is a. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I apologize, uh, apologies um, for the rendering. Um, but it's um, this is sort of the, the general uh, anatomy of uh, a product, how we use it, or how to have the. The publishing lab uses it, um, and to say it's sort of like um, the publishing lab not only does um, do kind of research into that, they also like actively like producing books, uh, also for the uh, Institute of Natural Cultures as well for other sort of like it's sort of in an institutional context. So they're like producing books for other entities in this university, um, and so this would this is how this would look like. So like you have a folder where all the um, marked on sources are. Um, um, you have a different folder where, for example, like the fonts end up, or maybe one folder where the original docx file uh, was placed. Um, and sort of the general sort of the transformation is, is mainly guided by those uh, make files um, and scripts. Um, and um, sort of like my approach was to, since since this really contains everything um, besides, um, let's say, handle um, and sort of like and supposed to panic this. Uh, my approach was to move move all of this that was normally um, executed on sort of like the the designers slash editors slash um, whoever's machine and move this <coughs> and sort of like automate this whole thing. Um, because sort of like this thing already comes with the with 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 the, all the instructions and all the, the rules for doing the transformation um, so I thought I could do like some sort of like um, 
build bot or, or uh, a continuous integration style thing. Um, so the name comes from this quote from the West Wing. Um, it's called, uh, no one likes to see the sausage made, including the guys who make it. Um, because it's often like just like tight deadlines and that's really also what you said about um, the first and second law of, of, of infrastructure. Um, like sort of like when you're working in an institutional context, it's it, there's often uh, yeah there's often just a requirement to get it done get it done by a certain time. Um, um, the sausage machine, those are like the two URLs that's sort of like my fork of that, um, and this is like a URL to test if you want to. Um, okay, and, and why why this thing? So um, there were like this is kind of like the the list of my my motivation. Um, why um, I explored that, um, sort of like getting getting people started with um, creating EPUBs in the command line is a little bit tricky, um, especially like if they're used to like, let's say using Word or using um, maybe InDesign, um, because there are like a lot of initial sort of like, um, initial sort of, and you need this sort of initial energy to go over the, the initial um, bump. Um, because like it's it on OS X it requires installing Xcode. Um, like some of our scripts have dependencies on Django. Um, you then end up sort of like telling people what Gru is <laughs> and how to navigate the, the the command line. And this is all things that I think they're like they're like awesome. And like I personally um, I'm comfortable with doing it. Um, but if you want to try to uh, sort of like spread um, spread the the, the, the active user base in terms of we also want sort of like designers to be um, involved in that and participating in sort of like a collaborative Git workflow and ideally also editors or even authors to, to do stuff in in, in uh, Markdown and this is sort of like problematic um, and then sort of like another problem is sort of like it's it's um, it's just not very um, it's just not very um, uh, it's just not very um, nice if sort of like um, you're empowering technology and sort of just throwing weird errors, like weird errors at the user, um, and then maybe you're the only person like in the institution that are is somehow capable of resolving those. Um, and then um, as you saw before, sort of like <coughs> since everything is sort of like self-contained in one repository, so sort of per one book is sort of like one repository. Um, there's a lot of duplication and a lot of problems are uh, a lot of problems are sort of like solved in an ad hoc way, um, which is then difficult for like um, which is difficult for sort of like maintenance um, because you're, you're you're solving or different people solve things in different ways, um, which is then difficult for documentation. For example, there's like a um, there's a Pandoc switch for say telling Pandoc um, um, what like what heading to use for the table of contents. Um, and so in some books of us, in some documentation, we would say like, oh, you have to do an H2 in order for it to show up in the, uh, in the, in the table of contents and for other things, like other books use the H1. Um, yeah, and, um, so I'll, I'll speed up a bit. Um, but sort of like, um, this idea was sort of like to have multiple modes of engagement. Um, and this is not, um, this is somewhat drawn from um, Alan Kay's work, um, and I think you have to mention Alan Kay in the, in the talk about <coughs> publishing. So this idea was to, to split this up into three levels. Um, so there was sort of like the mode of, of, of doing of images and of symbols, um, and sort of I, I personally see a lot of the the, the nitty gritty um, uh, terminal shell things, sort of like more like in, the, in, in those things, and I don't want to take this away, but I think um, there's other, maybe more approachable um, ways of, of doing things that are um, in, interesting for the novice user. Um, and this is a nice uh, McLuhan quote, quote that um, Alan Kay also uses. Um, it's sort of like, I don't know who discovered water, but it wasn't a fish. So sort of like, maybe sort of like, if you're new to the subject, maybe, um, Jumping in, sort of like from the from the fish perspective, um, isn't it shouldn't be the first step. Um, and this is also relates a bit to this um, thing that actually like a, people that use Word, um, I think they're like highly 
Cool. They are, they are, the, the new ones are actually like, I think, really specialized. And I think those people are really um, clever problem solvers because the, pro the program itself isn't so straightforward. So I think, um, I think I'd love to have, uh, in this hybrid publishing thing, I'd love to have something where you have a way of working where you just, you just try out things, you get a result, um, and you, you immediately have, sort of have, have a visual feedback. Because this is like at least how I started um, sort of like, um, you know, doing things with computers. And this is sort of like how this thing works. So this is, um, again, this is continuous integration. So um, basically, um, in a nutshell, you, 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 you make changes to the markdown file. Uh, you're committed to Git. Um, there is like a, on the back, on the, a sort of like there is a, a bot um, that will, um, in, in the cloud, um, fetch, your, fetch your comments and basically run make all um, on, on a server. And then the, the files that are changed are being committed again onto the Git repository. So it's, this is in the sort of like making changes to, um, to a book and it sort of like feeds back um, into the Git history. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, like a Neil's uh, Praxis Live thing because it also had a similar trajectory of sort of like having, um, having um, and this is a, a, a second mode, I would say, um, because like you had objects and there was a way of kind of like opening up those objects and going into the level of code and uh, coming back to LNK and the on that topic child thing. Uh, I think at least the original keyboard had this idea that you could press a function and space key and you have this kind of cork symbol here. Um, and the, at least originally the idea was that you would always be able to kind of edit the current, the source code that basically drives the current view. Um, and I'd, I'd love to have more of these kind of like things where you can, you have, you have tools and you have quiz, but you can like really easily go one step below if you need to or if you want to. <coughs> and um, in sort of the sausage machine, this is, our, this is basically our way of, of going one level below. It's, it's sort of like we have the make file. The make file is still part of the Git project. So if you want to experiment more of, of, like, of those kind of transformation rules, um, you, can, you can still go there. It's, it's no, no, and you can still run everything locally if you want to as well. Um, yeah, maybe, I don't know, it's, it's just like an idea sort of like the Chinese room or so. Um, I'm all for, um, I think it's great to um, sort of like tell students, you know, how things work um, and sort of like sort of untangle those black boxes for them. But then at the same time, I know that also like a lot of, a lot of really awesome projects um, have some sort of uh, idiosyncratic properties or so. So if I look, for example, like in, in sort of configuration files or so, um, and this is sort of like something that I, I came to learn just all the time or so, but like it, I think this is like a sort of big hurdle for people that are, you know, maybe new to this type of uh, sort of text-based configuration. Um, and so just thinking that sort of like, um, yeah, sometimes it's, it's really obvious to you, but like, um, Sort of the whole thing, and this is like this. Is, unfortunately, this also creeps into this is uh, like an image took, uh, taken from uh, Twitter. This also totally creeps into like current um, kind of like front end web development or so. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but sort of like uh, this is sort of like React JS mixing, actually really mixing a lot of really really different um, sort of like concepts and. Um, syntax and um, kind of like presentation versus um, uh, versus controllers or so, sort of like in the same thing or so. So I'm, I'm really sort of like, if this is, if, if I have to tell this to, if I would have to introduce a student um, to web development through these kind of means, like, um, or through this kind of like way of working, I'd be kind of lost. Um, cool, um, I'll just breathe, I know I'm over time. <laughs> But I'll just briefly show show how this thing looks right now. Um, it's kind of like a, a proto, like a work in progress. Um, so this is basically a website. Um, you can <coughs> oh. 
Well, normally those are leaves. This explains so it's like a website on the top left. Multiple tabs. On the top left tab, you, you're able to like import files. You can just drop in existing word files, image files, whatever. Um, this is sort of an optional step. The, tab, the second tab that we see now is, is um, it's sort of like um, a very simple um, text editor where you can edit. Um, your CSS files and make files and markdown files, and you see a, you see kind of like a, a, a similar like a file structure on the left where you can navigate. Um, so here, here this idea would be sort of like for someone who has never done markdown or has never done like epubs, here they could like in the browser like um, sketch uh, sketch out a file, um, and when you click save, it just renders it in the back backend um, using exactly the make file. Um, and you can choose for, uh, between different. Uh, you can choose between different templates. Once you hit um, sort of like continue on GitHub, and it just um, it it forks um, forks the template. It applies the it basically applies your 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 local changes on top, um, and it it read, um, it kind of hooks it up to the to the system so that whenever you um, so whenever you push the repository in the future. Um, the bot that also runs the server will basically run and make all for you and push again to, um, to GitHub. Yeah, um, I think that's it. Um, thanks so much for your um, time. <laughs> <laughs>